G'day everybody and welcome to Basket Case. Um, it's time to assemble the front forks. So what I've got here is everything that I need. Um, I have a new set of seals. I've um, got the Staunton tube caps which were terrible and I've um, filed them and sanded them and polished them. Um, brought them up like better than brand new I think. Uh, DU bushes. I've got uh, my shutter spacers. I've got um, my bottom of the fork legs, which I've cleaned up and painted. And the uh, damper pistons. I've got the springs in the back there. I've got my fork tubes here. These fork tubes were terrible. They were bent. One was bent quite badly. Um, they were very heavily pitted and worn. And someone had actually nicked one with a grinder at some stage. I sent them off to a local... Um, hard chroming specialist and they straightened them built them back up again and re-chromed them and polished them and they are like brand spanking new very happy uh, I've got my fork oil I'm going to put these rubber gaiters on um, the XS11 just normally has a dust seal which is in this kit here but I'm not going to use that I'm going to use those staunchions and um, there's a couple of second hand bits that I'm using again, such as the caps and the clips and the shims and the bolts and even these copper washers. Um, now I could probably go buy new ones, but copper washers last for ages. You just have to anneal them and I'll show you how to do that. So you make them soft again and they, they can reseal quite, quite happily. So let's get on with it. You can probably hear the dogs in the background going stupid. We've got a little French bulldog and it loves playing with our Australian bulldog. And they've got, they've got a rope toy up there and they're ripping it apart. All right. So, there. Now they provide you with seal grease. Red rubber grease. We'll need to go on to the leading edge of the seal. Provide some lubricant for it. Trying to get them started. And that's where I should have left it. But the next 20 minutes consisted of something like this. In the end, um, this is how the seals ended up. Now, the reason is that I bought these; they're aftermarket, and they're not uh, they're not right. Is this is all destroyed now? But there was like a lip on the outside here, and that was catching in the groove for the circlip, and they were just too tight. If you can't push them into the top and get them started by hand, I'd suggest that they they're no good. So, <clears throat> what I did was I contacted the local dealership and I bought genuine Yamaha ones. They came out of Japan and um, I popped into uh, Horizon Motorcycles and my friend Milton um, helped me put them in. We tried to, they, they started nice and easy and I thought, oh, this is going to be a breeze. And then we hung them in their fork um, tube bracket and uh, it was a bit bouncy. So we tried it on the ground and that was a bit firm as well we were worried about damaging the seal so I ended up putting them in the press and uh, to be honest with you it's the only way to go the XS 1100 we're lucky because um, the either the tube the staunching tube can fit down into the lower fork leg through the seal you don't need to have it in there and then slide the, the seal on so anyway but that's how they ended up That's it with the um, that's with the uh, 
the circlip and everything in place. So, Whew, thank God for that. Um, it's cost me money because uh, I can't remember what I paid for those seals, but they weren't cheap. And uh, then I went and had to buy the genuine, genuine ones and they were about $25 Australian each. So it did cost me money. It was an expensive lesson, so learn from it. Um, they're difficult to fit at home, especially if they're overly tight. So I'm now ready to assemble the, the lower fork tube and I, I guess we'll get on with that. Okay, let's go. Copper washers create a compressible seal between two mating surfaces so they mould onto any imperfections and take up any gaps and they become hard and they they over time from, from being under pressure so you can reuse them quite successfully but you need to anneal them first and I'll show you how we do that. We just need a flame and our copper washer and a bucket with some water and all we need to do is heat that to red hot and then drop it in the water and quench it and it's soft and malleable enough to reuse. That's that. Ready to go. And as before, a little bit of fork oil in here. This guy goes down through the leg. This is the dampener piston. Swipe a little bit on there. Pop a little bit of blue Loctite. This is nut lock. You don't want to go using super stud lock triple two or anything. It's a bit of a now on the earlier versions they had a the inside of that damper's got a um, a hex in there. Got a hex in there, and you can um, use a 17 mil hex head or a 10 mil bolt to come down, weld a piece of bar or something on a on a. Uh, I'm mumbling. Get a 10 mil bolt with a 17 millimeter hex head, and they'll fit into a slot they'll fit into a hex, corresponding hex in the top of the piston and you can just weld a bit of bar or something on that with a T handle thread it down through the top and you can hold this and stop it from spinning but uh, I've cheated, this, these don't have it, these uh, later model ones with the leading edge axle, the leading axle on them I've cheated and uh, just use a, a, a rattle gun, an impact socket gun and that that just rattles it up and um, stops it from spinning because you're using that, that high speed action. So that's done. On damper piston. Feels good. 
Feels really good. Okay. Next we want a spring. Boing, boing, boing. Drain plug. Some firm so it takes up that copper washer. It's in there. And the next job would be to fill this with oil. Squash, squash, squash it. I don't want to squash it. My end cap. I managed to find these new O rings on, on eBay, they're new old stock. They're an odd size O ring, so. I was lucky to find them because the ones that were on there were pretty perished. There's a bit of slippery on there. Make sure it's not rolled and it's all happy. Now according to the factory manual, we need 287 cubic centimetres of oil, which will put us there's 300, so we want to be up around here somewhere. Pull that in. Two fifty, sixty, sixty. Seventy-five, eighty, eighty-five. About there. Okay, now these springs are under a bit of tension. These are aluminium, they can be fragile. We just got to try and keep a bit of downward pressure on, keep rotating till we find the start of the thread. There we go, wasn't, just wasn't holding my tongue right. and firm. Wipe away the excess oil. Notice I'm holding this with aluminium soft jaws that I've just made out of some aluminium angle. A little bit of oil on the o-ring. Get that bad boy. Beautiful. Gator. Now 
there we have it. Okay, the last job now is to put some air pressure in, in here. Um, according to the manual, you shouldn't exceed 2.5 bar, which is 36 pounds, that's quite a bit. But it is only a small amount of volume in there, so we just need to be careful. I've already hit two bar. I've just exceeded it. I'll just let a little bit out. Right, I'm going to leave it at that. Two right, bar will do me now. Uh, there are our two forks now fully assembled with new oil, uh, bushes, o rings. The fork tubes have been straightened and re hard chromed. And uh, we've got gaiters on there, they're painted, they are ready to go on the bike. So we can tick that one off the list. Okay, so before we can put the new shiny forks on the bike, we need to prepare the headset. <clears throat> now, if you remember back to the other video, uh, when I removed the headset bearings, I now have to replace them. I said that I got these from a company called All Balls, All Balls Racing, and I fitted a set to my Honda CB450. The Honda CB450 has a uh, ball and race setup like a um, bicycle, and um, All Balls did a tapered roller conversion so if you've got an old CB Honda that's the upgrade to go. So this is the the bottom bearing the larger of the two you get the two bearings and you get a lower seal and an upper seal. I've already prepped and painted this and these come pre they feel like they're pre-packed and they might just be in oil so I'll pack those with grease before we assemble it. But before I go any further, I'm going to get the Dremel with a little wire buff on it and I'm going to clear up the inside of these so that we don't scratch our shiny new fork tubes with rusty, gangrous um, lower fork link. Okay, the Dremel has now that. got a wire buff, so let's clean it up. <laughs> bit of thousand grit wet and dry. Right, good enough. It's a little lubricated but just with some oil. purpose grease and just push it through the bearing so you can see it starting to come out around the rollers there you do that all the way around and that's called packing the bearing squish it up through your hand don't be worried about a bit of grease Stops your skin drying out. Wipe off any excess. tap this into place. I've got a bit of pipe with another bit of pipe welded to it. Um, it's down into the inner race so that it's not hitting on this part here. Should be able to just drive him home.
there it is, home. We haven't damaged the bearing at all. It feels a fair bit of resistance because there's grease in there, but that's uh, that's lovely. So now all I have to do is put the inner race into the frame, and that'll sit up into the inner race, like so. Okay, I've already fitted the bottom race. I'm just going to knock the top race in now. Yeah, that's all the way home. I didn't have a big enough socket, but um, you can see it's hard up against the shoulder um, down in here. So that's that's as far as it needs to go. The bottom one is a little bit more recessed. Wipe him clean. Um, so that's ready to accept the headset now. And triple clamps. Okay, so I'm, I'm not ready to fit this permanently yet, but we'll just trial fit it. Slide that in the bottom. Put our new bearing in the top, which is not yet everywhere. This dog here, which is not yet greased up. Um, yeah, I haven't greased it yet. I'm not going to fit this top seal yet, but I will just pop the shroud over and the lock, the locking nuts. That shroud needs paint, so I'll need to do that. When it's all assembled properly for the first. For the last time, I mean, I'll uh, we just pull that down and make it nice and snug. A bit of resistance on there, and then that'll go on top and lock, and that'll be done. You can see I've had to lengthen this uh, steering stop because with this big tank and the clip-on bars, it would crash into it. But that's actually not a bad steering lock compared to my Ducati. My Ducati is about there. It's terrible, it's one of the worst steering locks ever. This is about equal to my Triumph and that's not bad. Alright, that's hap I'm happy with that. We've now got the triple clamps ready to accept the forks um, and we'll keep moving.